Thank you for your presence in this place. We thank you, my Father, for ushering us in your presence, Lord. And we thank you, King of all glory, because you intended for us to be here. There is no other place you'd rather be at this time, King of all glory, than in your presence, my Father. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for honoring us, my Father. Thank you for setting up us, King of all glory. Thank you for anointing us, my Father. Thank you for using us today, my Father, in the name of Jesus. We continue to honor you and bless you and glorify your name. And we ask in the name of Jesus for you, Lord. Take over, take over, take over. Do with us as you desire, my Father. Have your way, have your way, have your way. All that you have intended for us to receive, all that you want us to receive, my Father, we have received in the name of Jesus. Because as we pray, my Father, we believe, King of all glory. We believe, my Father, in the prayers that we are praying, King of all glory. So have your way, my Father. Have your way, King of all glory. Anything that is not of you in this place, let it be uprooted now. Anything that has not come from you, my Father, let it die now. If there are any other voices that is not your voice, my father, father let it be silenced now in the name of Jesus because it is you Lord we have come to worship it is you Lord we have come to honor it is you Lord we have come to praise it is you my father yes we worship on that door have your way my father have your way king of all glory and my father thank you thank you thank you my father for the praise and worship team my father thank you king of all glory for the band thank you for the media my father as the leaders as they usher us king of all glory use them my father let your light be seen through them because you are our god you are the one who have come to honor we have come to worship receive all the glory receive all the honor thank you jesus Thank you, Lord. Let your will be done through us. In the name of Jesus, we have prayed, trusting and believing. Amen, amen, amen. 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 Welcome, welcome those in the sanctuary. It's uh, the day the Lord has made, so let us rejoice in it. And the online viewers, you are welcome in this place. Amen. Share the link. And agape praise. Amen. Lead us, lead us, lead us to the worship so that Amen. yes, ambush the enemies as you lead us. Amen. 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 Glory be to God. Amen. 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 This is the day the Lord has made for us. Hallelujah. We're going to rejoice and be glad in it. Amen. David said that in Psalms 122. There is power in this place. There is victory in this place. So we welcome everyone as we're going to praise God. Hallelujah. Media team, can you put for me um, Acts 1625? At 1625, when Paul and Silas were in prison. But at midnight, Paul and Silas were praying and singing hymns to God, and the prisoners were listening to them. Continue. Suddenly, suddenly, hallelujah. Yes. Suddenly, as we are praising, as we are singing, yes. believe God. That whatever you came with, everything that is a burden to you, tonight as you're singing, as you're praising, it will come to pass. Amen? 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 Amen. 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 Suddenly there was a great earthquake. So that the foundations of the prison Amen. were shaken. And immediately... All the doors were opened Amen. and everyone's chains were loosed. Hallelujah. Amen. So whatever chains are binding you today, yes. as we are praising, as we are ministering, as we are calling the name Amen. Jesus, they are losing right now. So be ready. Put on your dancing shoes. We are going to call the mighty God who is a healer, who is a deliverer, yes. who breaks all chains. Yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He is the Alpha 
and the young Omega. Hallelujah! Woo!
Hallelujah. Somebody give him praise. Hallelujah. Give him adoration. Hallelujah. He deserves to be glorified. Hallelujah. He deserves to be praised. Yes. He's the mighty God. Hallelujah. He is the Redeemer. Yes. The Alpha and the Omega. Yes. There is no one like Him. Yes. The beginning and the end. Yes. We give you all the glory, Lord. We give you all the, glory. We give you all the, honor. All the honor. We give you all the adoration Hallelujah. this morning. Hallelujah. 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 It all belongs to you. Yes. Jehovah God, we invite you in this place. Yes, Lord. As we gather unto you this morning, yes. we invite you to move yes, in our Lord. midst. Yes. We invite you to touch your people this morning. Break every chain. Open every door that is closed. Draw us close in your presence. Uh, just set your eyes upon him this morning for he is in this place. Just invite him. Invite him. Invite him into your situation. Don't let him pass you by this morning. Invite you. Invite him into your situation. Oh, we invite you. Oh, you are the Alpha and Omega. The beginning and the end and nothing compares to you. Nothing begins without you. You alone are God, Jehovah. You are the most high God above every situation. No way. We come this morning to encounter you. We desire more of you, less of us. Let your presence fill this place. Let your presence fill this place. Just invite him into your situation. For he is in this place. We are standing on holy ground because his presence is in this place. Because your presence is in this place. Oh, we cry out to you. You are well. We invite you, God. Worthy, 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 worthy. Just access his presence. He's in this place. You are welcome in this place. The King of glory is in this place. Can you feel him? Can you sense him? The King of Glory is here. Can you feel him? Can you sense him? The King of Glory is here. Can you feel him? Can you see him? The King of Glory is here. Can you feel him? Can you sense him? The King of Glory is here. Just invite him where you are. Can you feel him? Can you see him? The King of Glory is here. Father, you are in this place. You are welcome. We want to feel your presence in this place. We want to be liberated in your presence still this morning. Glory as God. Oh, awesome you are. You are worthy. Oh, can you feel him? Can you sense him? The King of glory is here. Can you feel him? Can you see him? The King of Glory is here. Can you feel him? Can you sense him? The King of Glory is here. I can feel him. I can sense him. The King of Glory is here. Can you feel him? Yeah. Can you feel him? Can you sense him? The King of Glory is here. Can you feel Him? Can you feel Him? Can you sense Him? The King of Glory is here. Can you feel Him? Yeah. Can you feel Him? Can you sense Him? The King of Glory is here. Can you feel Him? Yeah. Can you feel Him? Can you sense Him? 
that King of Zion. King of Zion. in this place shall bow to your name shall bow to your name for you are majesty just worship him where you are just worship him where you are if the king of majesty in this place will you just stand and 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 stare at him just worship him where you are invite him in your circumstance invite him in your situation just surrender unto him we surrender unto you you are king you are king you are lord of lords be glorified be exalted be magnified oh say something sweet to the father say something sweet to the father oh his presence is in this place we welcome you oh bring your every situation bring your every circumstance to him oh we lay it all down at your feet we lay it all down at your feet oh we lay it all down at your feet you are in this place you alone be magnified you alone be exalted if the king of glory in this place what will you do will you worship him will you worship him will you worship him be magnified you are glorious king in all your ways there is none like you you are holy in this place oh we want to know you more we want to praise you to your presence father we glorify your name spirit you are worthy roam in this place roam in this place touch your people this morning we glorify your name we glorify your name king of glory mighty ruler Root of chess, we welcome you. Queen of glory, mighty ruler. Root of chess, we welcome you. We welcome you, King, King of Zion. Mighty ruler, root of chess, we welcome King of Zion, King of Zion. Shifting in me, 
here. Pour out your presence. Pour out your spirit. Break every limitation. Break every chain that's bounding me. Oh, lay down. Slash down every wall that surrounds me. Oh, uh, oh, we pray. We cry out. We cry out to you, King of Kings. We surrender. We surrender. We surrender. For we are yours. We are yours. We are yours. We are yours. I am yours. I am yours. I am yours, take me and use me, I am yours, I'm yielded to you, I'm a vessel, I'm yours, I'm yours, take me, use me as a vessel, 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 show me closer to you.
Lord, you can start through me. Whatever you want to end, Lord, you can end through whatever you want to start. Come on. Whatever you are, we are you the vessel.
to ever stand before your holy presence. Oh, we're so grateful, Lord, for the blood of your Son, Jesus Christ, that to this day it still avails for us, oh God. Because of the blood, oh God, we have access. We have access, oh God, into your presence. Father God, Scripture declares that where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom, oh God. Hallelujah. There is freedom, oh mighty God. All of the shita. Oh, in your presence, there is fullness of joy. At your right hand, oh God, they are pleasures. Lord, what a joy. What a delight that we can come before the maker of the universe. The King of kings. The Lord of lords. The one that was and is and is to come. The all forever love. The ancient of days. The only and created one. Hallelujah. The God that knows no end. Hallelujah. Rama Sheka Talamaya. Rema Sharababa. Reka Shitalamaya de Kobaya. Nende Remo Shaka Talamai Kobayande. What a joy. of who you are, a great God, an awesome God, a holy God. Yes, mighty God, you have loved us with an everlasting love. Your mercy towards us, O oh God, is unfailing. Mighty God, you pick us up from the mighty clay and set us on the rock, Jesus. Lord, today, 
we stand in boldness not all father in our strength not because of our ability and our talent not of our giftings almighty God but because Lord you have enabled us through your mercy and this morning we give you glory we give you honor we give you power we give you dominion oh God as we join with heaven as they unseasonably bow before you and cry holy holy is the Lord God Almighty a father you would have your way in this place the Lord our lives would not be the same a father in your consistent mysterious ways you transform us you change us oh God through the power of the resurrection of Jesus and this day we surrender to you we have prayed in Jesus mighty name amen and amen hallelujah 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 praise the Lord thank you I got the praise praise the Lord hallelujah it's always difficult to 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 stop a move of God you know when God is moving sometimes it's very difficult for us to just stop that flow but I want to encourage you to bask in his presence this morning because the Lord is here and even as I stand here to speak he does not stop him from doing what he's doing amen amen I want to greet you in the precious name of our Savior Jesus. Amen. I want to thank Reverend C, the overseer um, over straight at Agape for giving me the opportunity to just bring a word of encouragement, a word of exhortation to each one of us this morning. I believe I will not be long because the message I bring is nothing strange. I'm not going to preach anything that you've never heard before. I'm basically sharing some encouragement as I felt the Lord just speak to my heart, my heart, and I believe He's also going to speak to you in the same way. I just want you to encourage your neighbor. Just say to your neighbor on your left, you matter. And then speak to the one on your right. God knows your name hallelujah praise the lord we're gonna pray once again and then i'll just go ahead and just quickly get into this brief word and then we'll be praying together father we want to thank you because father you have called us for such a time as this you have called us into the kingdom in a very different time and father we count it a privilege and lord we will stand and be counted we will not sit back we will not hold back father god we will pull of our lives and just let you do that which is your desire concerning us we honor you we bless you because we're a good god father even as i speak i pray father lord god you will take these lips of clay and father you will take over my mind and my faculties oh god and just enable me to be clear and to deliver your word of father father even as you've desired it i thank you father for each of these your servants your children almighty god that father sit in this house it's not by accident, but by divine order and purpose. For you purpose this day that each of these your people, for even those that mighty God are listening to us online, that they should be in this moment for such a time as this. Therefore, God, we surrender back to you. We honor you because you're a good God. Our Father, you will have your way. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as it is in heaven in jesus name we have prayed amen praise the lord hallelujah <clears throat> for a title the message that i bring is nothing probably you would just say this guy has nothing new to say <laughs> i speak about the same thing all the time because i only see one message in the bible amen so the by the, the word that i bring today if you want a title is the mission is still the same say to your neighbor the mission is still the same hallelujah praise the lord so before i get into our message uh, um i just want to acknowledge the fact that you know it's been so powerful the way 
We have been led this morning from the prayer time through the praise and worship. Agape, thank you so much. That was so powerful. I needed that because, you know, this morning as I was praying, I was like, God, where are you? <laughs> but when I walked in this house, I just felt stirred up in my spirit. So this, th this month we've been looking at a theme which is basically around us being available uh, if we're going to be a people that will impact or that will have the right kind of impact in our time and in our generation. And I, I got thinking, I was saying, most of the time, what would stop us from being in that place of real availability? Because availability is really subjective depending on how you, you uh, interpret stuff and, um, and from per what perspective you want to look at it. But I wanted to just start with something very general. Like most of the time, you know, we, especially who are part of the evangelical or Pentecostal movement, we sometimes get lost in our own things. And we can get sometimes to a place where we begin to um, mystify everything around us and we move away from the basic, authentic relationship that we have with God. And so I'll just, to help us understand that, I'll ask each one of us, when you pray, what do you really pray about? What do you really pray about? So, most of the time we will pray for needs, we will pray for progress, we will pray for power, we will praise, we will worship. You know, but I just wanted to just bring a few statements that will help you. That helped me when I do my own personal devotion. We're all different. You know, first of all, uh, we need to pray for God's kingdom to come. You see, we are about the kingdom. What does that really mean? We, it means that some, I should not only be preoccupied about me. We are a body and a family here. Sometimes don't pray for you. Pray for other people. Just say, I'm going to pray for people. You even list, maybe put in a list of names and pray for each of us people. I promise you, you'll be amazed what begins to happen. Because when you pray for other people, God begins to speak to you. Most of the time when I've had God speak so clearly, it's because I was praying for other people, not for me. Um, I've made, had many of us, uh, I mean, those kind of situations. So pray for the kingdom of God to come. So that basically talks about the people receiving the message of God. People you know, people that are around you, people in the church, pray for other people. Uh, we need to, be, to demystify um, our walk with God. God is an awesome and great and mighty God. And many, many times when we come before him, I, we were having a discussion. We usually have a, a time, our time um, of sharing and we study the Bible together with a, as a praise team. In one of our sessions, I think we're talking about devotion and, and, and power. In fact, it was a question of what does it mean to have more power or something like that. So I was say, we were talking to ourselves and saying, see, we need to come to a place where you basically demystify this concept of God and relent because God has invited us. So what does that really mean? You see, God is awesome. Yes. I react differently. When I come before him, we're just, I was just sharing with the team. I said, when I come before him, one of the things that I've seen consistently for me, I don't know about you, I will shed tears. You see, people will tell you men don't cry. But for me, when I'm in his presence, I don't know what happens. Tears just roll. Tears will just roll down. And for me, that's my place. And God speaks to me in my own way. So I'm saying to us, as we begin to, see, uh, to, to, to look at what I'll be sharing today, demystify this concept of God and allow him to be there for you, to touch you, to speak to you. Have you ever wondered how many, how many times that the Bible talks about men, men of old, like the Moses, the Abraham, and the Lord say to him, and he doesn't, the Lord doesn't speak in gibberish and clear things. He gave them clear instructions. He told them, I want you to build a temple. He wasn't gibberish and they were like, what is this say? What is he saying? Well, I think I heard, they heard him. We need to basically demystify the concept of God. So that's what I'm saying. I know we are painters and sometimes I also go crazy sometimes. But sometimes we need to just come back to ourselves and say, hey, God is here. <laughs> Amen. So let's demystify uh, the concept of God. We, we are filled with the Holy Ghost and not possessed by the Holy Spirit. I, I'm putting that just to teach. Okay, so sometimes we, if you look at a demoniac, demoniacs are out of control. Why? They are possessed. Do you understand? Meaning they are taken over. For us, we are filled. The Holy Spirit is not a, a spirit that will come and take over your life and start doing crazy stuff. No. That's not the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit fills you. You will manifest strange things like you start laughing crazy. You know, you can 
You'll be slain sometimes. I've, been, I've gone through those things where you are hammered and you can't get up. Those things happen. But I want you to know that the Holy Spirit does not possess you. Tell your neighbor, you're not possessed of the Holy Spirit. <laughs> you are filled with the Holy Spirit. <laughs> I just want to just demystify. The reason why is I am saying this is because sometimes we fail to engage practically because everything is a mystery. Everything is, in, is, a bla- is like a daze. So we can't... Um, really engage God correctly. So this is basically a foundation. Just have that background even as we go forward. Then uh, we are to be transformed by the renewal of our minds and not be transformed by the removal of our minds. So the Bible says be transformed by the renewal of your mind, not removal of your mind. So don't come into church and leave that professional person that you are in those environments where you execute professionally and you are so strategic and everything. You come into church and you bring us an empty head. You just become this crazy person. (laughs) You understand? Where you don't want to think. Think. Tell your neighbor, think. Think. So today I'll be bringing a challenge. For those of you that are younger than us, some of us were born before computers. We were born a long time ago. So some of this stuff is really strange to us. When you're teaching us, we're like, what are you doing? (laughs) The world has changed. So we need to operate differently. That's what I'm saying. So for the young people, it's a bigger challenge for me and a few other people that are probably now brackets where we are on the fifth fifth, uh, floor of some (laughs) structure. You know, the... We, we are counting our times. Be realistic. I think I've spoken before. But be realistic. Don't think like you're going to live forever. You basically practically have maybe 30 years at the most. 30, 40 years if you really live long. For me, I've told the Lord, if I can still walk at 90, I want to be there. But if not, <laughs> hallelujah. <laughs> you understand what I'm saying? So, all I'm saying is be transformed by the renewal of your mind. Don't remove your mind. Don't come here and play dumb. Most of you are very smart. So we want that mind in here. So um, God, God and chaos do not go together. Amen. Amen. God and chaos do not go together. So just remember that God and chaos don't go together. So just judge for yourself. Don't be, chaotic environments are okay. As long as there's a spirit of God is, but there's a certain chaos which is like, mm -mm, no. You understand? So I thought I should just put up uh, that, that before we go into what we speaking about. So, the first thing I want to put, if you're taking notes, is the God we serve. I want to talk about this God that we serve. So, for us to understand where we are going or why about this mission, who do we serve? Who do you serve? That does matter because if you don't know what you're doing, if you don't know who you're serving, you won't know what you're doing and you won't manifest the right things. We represent a God that is powerful and real and you can't even describe him. He's God. So, um, I'm going to read something here, say, which I wrote. I say, Jehovah is a name for God that is uh, particularly used in the context of the Bible, especially in the Old Testament. Jehovah is often understood as a personal name of God and of Israel. Um, uh, here, some of the, so some, so some of the, keys, uh, some of the key, key aspects of this God or, or elements or attributes of this God, I'm going to explain them using the name Jehovah itself. The reason why I'm going to use that is what you can remember. The attributes of God are probably about 13, almost 16 that are like named. But we're only going to touch maybe about six or seven of those. And so for us as believers, if you don't understand who sent you, who you stand for, it's a problem. Today, I I just had like a place of revelation, even as, you know, the the praise team was was ministering. In the praise, when when that powerful praise... (laughs) You know, where we just spoke about the powerful things about God. You know, it just took me to a different place. I'm like, okay, praise God. That's my God. That's my God. Amen. Sometimes we forget. So I want to remind you, who do we serve? So the God we serve. So the first thing, if you look at the name the Jehovah, the first letter is J. So this one, I'm going to say it stands for just or justice. Okay? So the Bible... Um, affirms the justice of Jehovah God proclaim, proclaiming proclaiming in Psalms 89 verse 14 righteousness and justice are the foundation of your throne love and faithfulness go before you amen then in verse verse 7 it says um, Jehovah eternal ne- uh, God, Jehovah's oh sorry I almost jumped to the next thing so basically when you talk about this passage you're talking about the justness of God God's 
just. So justice, you know, God stands for justice. You need to remember that. So who do we represent? We represent a God. And that God stands for justice. So there's no way you're going to go into the world and begin to minister anything that is contrary to that disposition. Because the God I represent is a God of justice. So whatever I stand for has to be consistent with the place of justice. So I want you to be very, I want, I want to make it clear. Nothing, nothing mystical about that. Just remember that a God we serve is a just God. So there's no way that God will bring anything unjust to you or he's desiring anything unjust for anybody out the, outside. Okay? So just remember that. Then the second, the second le uh, letter is E. So eternal. Jehovah is eternal. Is, is eternal. Jehovah's eternal nature is emphasized in the passage, passages like Deuteronomy 33 verse 27. The eternal God is your refuge and underneath are the everlasting arms. I'm going to read that again. The eternal God is your refuge and underneath are the everlasting um, arms. So when you talk about this, it talks about eternity, like space. Have you imagined space? Some of you don't like to think hard enough. Sometimes when I think too much, I start getting scared. I'm like, oh, no. Okay, let's stop it now. Think about space. Space is this open place that's like endless. It has, <laughs> it's like a space that is just goes. That is why when you go into the moon and stuff, they anchor you because there's no gravity there. You have to be anchored. Because if you fly away, boss, you become a planet also. You'll be, <laughs> you'll be revolving <laughs> around some, some, the sun. <laughs> you'll be gone into space that is endless. That is the nature of God. He does not, he can't contain him. His eternal in nature is like forever. It doesn't make sense to the brain. But I thank God I'm here. Because that's a testimony enough that God is there. Amen. Think about it. Those who say there's no God, it is true the Bible says only a fool will say there's no God. You have to be a fool, really. I'm not the one who said. The Bible says a fool will say in his heart there is no God. I will say that again. The Bible says a fool will say in his heart there is no God. Think about it. You exist. Where did you come from? From an ape. What do you mean? An ape was also just a creature. That's a joke. Evolution doesn't make sense. <laughs> I understand humanity trying to move away from the concept of God. But bottom line is, you know, God is eternal. He has been there. The next uh, letter is H, holy. The holiness of Jehovah is highlighted in Isaiah um, 6 verse 3. And they were called to one another, and they were calling to one another, holy, holy, holy is the Lord Almighty. The whole earth is full of his glory. Now, holiness is a difficult concept for us to, co to comprehend because it's a place of purity. And Now, the standard of God, maybe let me put it like this. Let me use a different word. The standard of God is extremely high. Like, <laughs> there's, standard, there's ISO standards, whatever standards in this world. Those are man, man, man standard. We've given ourselves those standards. Now, God's standard is like perfection. That is why I think I've, I've spoken in this pulpit before. That when you meet God, you see, you meet God in like in a physical nature. We meet him like almost like we interact somehow, not physically or not in a manifest or visible. We don't see him. When you see him, you will die of, I don't know, you are powerless. You are just finished. <laughs> because he is God. He is like holy. There's purity. Imagine Isaiah the prophet. When he saw him, he said, ah, oh, I am a man of unclean lips. That's the first thing. You just felt like, oh, the standard here is just another one. So our God is holy. Amen. The next acronym is O, which the, the letter O is omnipotent. Omnipotent. It depends on which school you went to. Some of us will learn English in Africa. <laughs> so, so our pronunciation sometimes, forgive us. We are trying. <laughs> omnipotent. Meaning, all oh, powerful. Have you ever heard of a nuclear bomb? Have you seen what that thing can do? It can devastate. That is like kindergarten for God. That's like, you're just joking. <laughs> so the power of God is like beyond. Now, I'm saying these things because sometimes the way we behave as believers, who, which God are you serving? We are scared. 
we are not sure. We are like, maybe, you know. But the God that I'm talking about is omnipotent. He is all-powerful. There is no limitation with this God. The limit is with your brain. That's why the Bible says, be transformed by the renewal of your mind. When you renew that mind, you begin to understand. And sometimes it has to go beyond mental. It has to be a rema, a revelation, where now your spirit understands. That's why the Bible says, um, faith cometh but by hearing. And hearing comes by the word of God. So when the word is deployed, you have a rema. Suddenly you know, oh, Lord God, thou hast met the heavens and the earth by thy great power. You understand? So, I'm talking about the power of God. Now, think about it. How many times? What do you think God cannot do? I like the Nigerians, our Nigerian brothers and sisters. I like the. He says, what God cannot do <laughs> does not exist. <laughs> you know, when I heard that, I'm like, what is that? <laughs> what God cannot do does not exist. Hallelujah. <laughs> yeah, that's called pigeon. <laughs> It's not English. You, you write, write that in your exam, they'll fail you. <laughs> Don't do that. So, the, the, the issue is what God cannot do does not exist. Apart from anything wicked, God is not wicked. You know, his attributes will not allow him to be wicked or anything. But in terms of like limitation, that song talks about limitation. God got no limits. There's nothing that will stop him. He, has, he can zap you from but Philip was translated from one place, like from, from Maryland into Pennsylvania. Boom. Afika Philip. We arrived. Sorry, I used my native language. I was speaking in tongues. <coughs> I was speaking in the tongue, not the tongues of the Holy Spirit. <laughs> so, <laughs> so Philip is zapped and he finds himself speaking to a eunuch, the Ethiopian eunuch. And ministers, after he's finished, he's zapped back. Ah! Is this Star Trek now? <laughs> those, I know those that watch Star Trek, probably those things are, yeah, they're on TV. But the thing is, God cannot, has no limitations. Joshua, at war, time was running out. He looks, he says, this chaps, we can't kill them. The time is finished. He says, God, stop the sun. <laughs> now, think about that. That's a crazy ask. That's knowing your God. That's knowing that the, the, what God cannot do does not exist. He says, stop the sun. Do you know what that means? That is like rotation stops. That is a disaster from science. But God stopped the sun. I don't know what happened. I don't know what happened, but God stopped the sun. So what God cannot do? What God cannot do? What God cannot do? Amen, oh... <laughs> Praise the Lord. <laughs> Praise the Lord. So the next, the next uh, uh, letter is V, which is victorious. Jehovah is portrayed as a victorious. Um, if you look at Exodus 15, verse 3, the Lord is, is a warrior. The Lord is his name. God is a mighty warrior. Many, many times if you read the Old Testament, you will find that Israel, when they f went to fight, he says, this, the battle is not, the Lord, is not mine, but the Lord's. So many times, those enemies of Israel <laughs> were walloped, not by Israel. God would just go there and hammer them. He would sometimes confuse them. They start killing each other. Sometimes we just wipe them out. You understand? God is a mighty warrior. So sometimes when you feel that defeat, like the world is against you, your back is against the wall, just remember that your God is a mighty warrior. Tell your neighbor, my God is a mighty warrior. He fights for me. He fights for me. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. The next letter is A, or Alpha, for those that use the phonetic alphabet. O is, is a almighty. This is almost the same as omnipotent. So Jehovah is acknowledged as almighty. Revelation, verse 1, sorry, chapter 1, verse 8. I'm the Alpha today, it was proclaimed. I'm the Alpha, the Omega, says the Lord, who is and who it was and who is to come, the might, 
the Almighty. The Almighty. There are people that call themselves Almighty on the earth. You are a joker. <laughs> you cannot be Almighty. Only God is Almighty. As long as you are flesh and blood, you cannot be Almighty. But the God we carry is Almighty. Amen. So the next one is, is H for hope. Believers um, find hope in Jehovah. So this is Romans chapter 15 verse 13. May the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace as you trust in him so that you may overflow with hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. So if you look at these characteristics, I just picked a few. If you ask the choir or the, the praise team, we went through like a span of them. Or the word span is not English. It's, it's, it's like a, a, a number of them. My children are the ones who, who brought that word in the house. When they're saying something is a lot, they say a span. <laughs> yeah, so, so the attributes are a lot. When that describe who God is. There's, we've talked about om omnipotence. There's omniscient, meaning he knows all things, everything. Even the things that haven't, that haven't happened yet, he knows them. Can you imagine? That is so scary. Can you imagine being able to see tomorrow <laughs> in this totality? That is another level. But God is like that. He sees like way ahead of your life. So anyhow, I thought I should just lay that foundation um, for us. The next stage or the next point we want to deal with is what has he done? Or we can say what has he done for you and me? That is the next question we are asking. I'm going to go through a few, about three points under this one. And then I'm going to go towards the real message. And then we'll be closing. We'll be doing a call to action. <clears throat> what has he done? The first thing I'd like to talk about is justified us. He has justified us. What does that mean? Okay, so if you look at Romans chapter ch chapter. Um, chapter 3, verse 24 to 26, the Bible says, And all are justified freely by the grace through the redemption that comes by Christ Jesus. God presented Christ as a sacrifice of atonement through the shedding of his blood to be received by faith. He did this to demonstrate his righteousness because um, in his forbearance he had left um, the sin committed beforehand unpunished. He did it to demonstrate his righteousness at the present time so as to be just um, and, and the one who justifies those who have faith in Jesus Christ. This is from 24 to 26. So when you talk, when you look at this passage, I'm going to read a few more. Galatians chapter 2 verse 16. Know that a person is not justified by works of a law, but by the faith in Jesus Christ. So we too um, have put our faith that have put our faith in Christ, that we may be justified by faith in Christ and not by the works of a law, because by the works of a law no one will be justified. And then Galatians chapter three, verse twenty-four. So the law was our guardian until Christ came that we might be justified by faith. Then I will read one more, uh, Romans chapter 5, verse 1. Therefore, since we have been justified through faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. Now, in case you don't understand this big word justification, justified. Basically, basically what it means is you are guilty. But God has decided you are not guilty. <laughs> I'm telling you, it's tough to conceive. That's why people don't understand salvation that is so simple. It's simple but difficult. Simple in the sense that you don't have to do anything to earn it, so to speak. Christ did it all. Christ paid the price for you. Because of the blood of Jesus Christ, all you need is a faith in that process and God will consider you clean. When you come before him, God doesn't judge you based on your activities and everything because you'll be dead already. You understand? God is like you can't stand certain things. Because if you look in the past, his radical anger sometimes, there had to be intercession. Like if Moses wasn't a good guy, Israel would have been wiped out. <laughs> but many times when God was like brutally annoyed, he says, I'm going to kill these people. Moses says, you can't do that. So that same God 
what he has done for us is a mystery. It's a miracle because he has decided to hold us not guilty. I think I say it right here in this pulpit. The term, um, I plead the blood of Jesus, is not in the Bible. You won't find it. If anybody can find that, you can show me. I've never seen a scripture like that, like, I plead the blood of Jesus. But how many of you have ever prayed like that? Yeah, we do that. You know why we do that? It was popularized by a guy called Charles Finney. He was an evangelist. He was a lawyer. So he says when he's brought before judgment, when he stands before the court concerning his sin, he says, I plead the blood of Jesus. Because that blood avails for me. I am. I am justified. Amen. So, that, that is a very big thing. Now, the reason why I bring that up is because sometimes the devil will tell you, ah, boss, you cannot go tell people about Jesus. Who are you? I saw you yesterday. <laughs> you are justified. The, the devil is the accuser of the brethren. The devil is the accuser. He will accuse you. He will remind you of stuff that you don't want to think about. But just tell him, I've been justified according to scripture. Amen. The second part is sanctified. We have been sanctified. What does sanctified mean? <laughs> yeah, we've been sanctified. So sanctification is a process by which a believer uh, is set apart and made holy by God. The scripture emphasizes that the role of Jesus Christ in, in sanctification of believers um, is setting them apart as a holy, blameless through his sacrifice and love. It's almost the same as what we've just come from. But bottom line is, we're made holy because of, of, of Christ. Now, I'm going to read a few scriptures just for, for the sake of record. Uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 1 and verse 2. For the church of God, in, to the church of God in Corinth, to those sanctified in Jesus Christ and called to be his holy people together with all those everywhere who call on the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Therefore, Lord... Um, uh, their, their Lord and, and ours. Amen. So Paul is addressing the church at Corinth. He says to those that have been sanctified uh, to the body of Jesus Christ. I mean, uh, sanctified and uh, called holy. His holy people. So we are made holy. Not because we attained it. Because you can't, unfortunately. You can try. It doesn't work. It won't work. But you have been made holy by God. Amen. Amen. Then Hebrews chapter 10 verse 10. Um, the Bible says, and by that will we have been made holy through the sacrifice of the body of Jesus Christ once and for all. So again, it's emphasizing how this whole effort and initiative basically sits on God's grace. He's just chosen to forgive us. He says, this, these people, if I, if I was to deal with them properly, none of them would survive. But he's chosen to create a process for us. Amen. Uh, First Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 23. Uh, may God himself, the God of peace, sanctify you through and through. May your whole, may, may, may your Holy Spirit soul, may your whole spirit, soul, and body be kept blameless at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. So again, we're talking about sanctification. So that's the, th the second thing. Then he raised, the third thing is he raised us up or exalted us. I know it sounds like an abomination or like blasphemy. God has raised us up. He has exalted us. Not above himself, but we have been exalted. I'm going to explain that. So if you look at uh, this one, uh, the concept of a believer being seated together with Christ in high places signifies a spiritual position and authority as followers of Jesus Christ. So this is why. The reason I'm giving you all this is you need to know who you are, what God has done for you. So it signifies authority. God has deliberately said, okay, I've cleaned you. I've just, first of all, you're not guilty anymore. I know you've done all that stuff. Forget it. As far as the east is from the west, so far if I remove my, your sin from you. So he says, into the sea. I think Ellen Baylor, for those that, Ellen Baylor was before most of you were born. She used to sing, she sang a song, into the sea of forgetfulness. That's where God has taken my sin. <laughs> So in the place, God has decided to forget about your sin. That's powerful, I'm telling you. That's why Psalm 103 is a powerful passage. Yes, so God has chosen in his own will to, to, to bring us in a place of 
where he forgets about our sin. Now he has lifted us up. And we're going to look at Ephesians chapter 2 verse 6. And God raised up Christ and seated us with him in heaven, in the heavenly realms in Christ Jesus. Now, that is a powerful place. So the devil comes to you and he's trying to play games with you. Just tell him, boss, do you know who I am? Do you know where I am? I'm seated with Christ. What, I, what did you say? Sit down. <laughs> you understand? So bottom line is we don't understand where we sit. We act sheepish. We're running away from stuff. We are, we are, we are, we are as scared as everybody else in the world. We should not be. How do you change that? You need to meditate on these passages I'm giving you. Go and think about them and allow God to, to transform you. Colossians chapter 3 verse 1. Since then, since then you have been raised with Christ. Set your heart on things above where Christ is seated at the right hand of God. Amen. Set on your heart on things above. Where, because, because why? You are seated. You have been raised with Christ. So your mindset has to change. You can't be so mundane like everybody who is hopeless and helpless, trying to find purpose in wrong things, trying to just push limits on wickedness. You know, people now, they are not just wicked. They push it. They want to be super wicked. I'm telling you. People don't just, wicked is not enough. They want super wickedness. <laughs> don't, we can't be like that. We can't be in that same mindset where we move from just, we are also just like everybody else. No, we can't. So, uh, then if you look at, uh, so basically those two passages, um, we we'll talk about, so he says, this, so if you look at these passages, they highlight the spiritual reality of a believer being united with Christ in his resurrection and exaltation, sharing in his victory and authority as they live out their life of faith on earth. So when we sit, when we're living on this earth, we cannot be like everybody. One, I, my, my, some of my colleagues at my office, <laughs> you see, if you're a sales guy like me, sometimes it's, there's pressure. Because targets don't stop. When you finish a month, you think, you think you did well. Another month has started. <laughs> you have to start again, pushing your target. So my friends just say, why, why are you always happy? Why, are you, why do you always have joy? Why, why are you not stressed? I said, boss, I can't explain that to you. <laughs> you understand? You know, the joy that God has given me, no one can take it away. Nothing will take it away. Because I understand that things are beyond... Um, the superficial, what we see out, out there. So basically, I'm saying to you, you need to understand who you are. You are seated in high places with God. The, sec the third one is filled us with this Holy Spirit. Now, this one is a big one. All of them are great and big. But this one, I like it because the church doesn't understand. <laughs> um, I don't know what analogy I can give about this one. But bottom line is, God has given us the Holy Spirit freely. But we're always begging for the Holy Spirit. We're always begging for the Holy Spirit. Let me tell you a secret. The Holy Spirit is already poured out. The problem is we just need to align and allow him. Allow me to just stray a little bit. I will make sure that I come back quickly. I want to, I want to, I was thinking about this and the best analogy I can give you is a song written by the late Keith Green. Keith Green is one of my favorite because I mean, he's, um, when I was dating my wife, we used to <laughs> share a lot of that music, the two of us. So we, we would live through it. So this music for me, it has like, anchor, I, I, it's anchored me in a lot of ways because this guy was a bit extraordinary in the way his thought pattern his devotion was different, was radical. It was difficult to follow because he brought up very radical ideas. And one of the songs that I love, for those that uh, can, in fact, music is now out there on YouTube. Go and look for a song called Draw Me by Keith Green. So Draw Me is a song by Keith Green. It says, draw me, oh, draw me. Please draw me, my Jesus, into your presence where I cannot lie. My soul is so thirsty. I cannot endure it. And if I can't get closer, I surely would die. Take me. Oh, take me. Please take me, my Jesus. Quickly, before I forget that I'm lost. 
For so many times my mind has deceived me that I really don't have to carry the cross. And then he says, I just need to know how to pray. My wicked desires block the way. Sometimes I have grieved you away. I don't want to do that today. And then he says, help me. Oh, help me. Please help me, my Jesus. Save me from sins that I thought were of God. Kill me with kindness and break through my blindness. I know until I'm dead, I can never live on. Amen. What is its lesson? When I look, listen to this song, the lesson is this. The Holy Spirit is poured out, brothers and sisters. It's not like God poured out and then he unpoured. <laughs> if there's anything like that. The Holy Spirit is poured out. We need to die. That's the problem. We are too alive. <laughs> We're busy with ourselves. Too many things going on. You need to learn to die before him, to surrender. That is where you come into a place of devotion, a place where you are completely open. Let me tell you something. It is worthless for you to pretend before God. He knows you. Everything. Even the things you don't want us to know that, that you think. He knows already. So, why are you wasting time coming and acting religious before God? Stop it and be real. <laughs> Just come to him as you are. He knows everything. Boss, he knows it. Everything he knows. Even the things that you think that if you, if you were to broadcast them, people would be freaking out, what? <laughs> you know, God knows. So for me, that's a place of comfort. So when I come before him, I don't start telling stories, being religious before my God. I just bring myself. So the more you do that, the more you die to self, the more you will see the freedom of the Holy Spirit. You can cry out, feel me, feel me, feel me. If you're not dead, where is he going to come? Because there's too much happening in you. He wants to come, but <laughs> he looks and says, hey, what's going on here? You understand? The Holy Spirit is sensitive. He's, a, he's very sensitive. He's easy. That's why I'm saying you're not possessed. He's not like a demon. Demons, they are very aggressive. They will possess you. And they will take over your life. And do you, make you do crazy things. The Holy Spirit doesn't work like that. He, you allow him. But when you do, the things you're crying for, like the power you want to see, you will see flow. The problem is most of the time is motives, all kinds of things going on with us. Die. That's what I'm saying. The Holy Spirit is already given. So we need to do what? Die. <laughs> we are too alive. It's supposed to be a living sacrifice. <laughs> too alive. Jumping all over the fire. <laughs> So, I'm just going to read a few passages. Ephesians chapter 2, verse 6. And God raised up... Um, sorry, sorry, I went back. Uh, Acts chapter 2, verse 4. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other tongues as the Spirit enabled them. Um, Ephesians chapter 5, verse 18. Do not get drunk with wine, which leads to debauchery. Instead, be filled with the Holy Spirit. Acts chapter 4, verse 31. After they prayed, the place where they were meeting was shaken, and they all were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak the word of God with boldness. Galatians chapter 5, verse 22 to 23. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, forbearance, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Against such, there is no law. Amen. I'll be done very shortly. Amen. So, I encourage you. You are filled with the Holy Spirit. Tell your neighbor, you are filled with the Holy Spirit. So if you're not baptized in the Holy Spirit, we can help you pray. You don't have to plead. I remember when I got baptized in the Holy Spirit many years ago. I was in grade 12, I think. With There was uh, four of us. It was me, a uh, certain brother who's, who's back in Zambia, brother Mishani, Kapsana. And there was Pastor Obia Sisala. And I think there was a fourth. I think Vimbi might take you one of those. And I remember I was so scared. <laughs> it was a beautiful night. And I was so scared. I'm thinking, Holy Spirit, ha! Huh? What is that? <laughs> you know? So when they were praying for us, I'm like, hmm, what's going to happen here? But then I remember Brother Makrot, he, he stopped us. He says, ah, brothers, 
the Holy Spirit has already been poured out. Just receive him. You know, just believe and just receive. Now remember, I opened my eyes. I, I said, okay, let me open my eyes now. I opened my eyes and I began to say, thank you, Lord, that I've been baptized in the Holy Spirit. And I remember that night. It was a beautiful night. I'll never forget that night. And then, boom, <laughs> a language came upon me. I started speaking, ja. <laughs> I'm like, uh-oh. I'm a raster now. <laughs> <laughs> I went into some crazy tongues. I mean, tongues, and I mean, the feeling, I felt like I was covered my whole body. And that feeling does come back many times. But even if it's not there, I have been filled with the Holy Spirit. So don't be moved by feelings. Don't wait for goose pimples or, or whatever. Don't wait for a rush. You have been filled with the Holy Spirit. All you need to do is allow him to work in you. Amen. Praise the Lord. We are almost there. One more before I move to the final things. He authorized us to, pre he authorized us to represent him. Tell your, 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 your neighbor, you are authorized. You are authorized. So, you have the legal right to carry his power. You've been authorized. And I'm going to show you from scripture. Matthew chapter 28 verse 18 to 20. The Lord came to him and said, all authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit and teaching them to obey everything I have commanded. And surely I am with you always to the very end of the age. So Christ is talking about us being authorized because of him. The Bible says we are what? Seated with whom? Christ. And it says all authority has been given to me on hev in heaven and on earth. So it's not just in the heavens and the earth and under the earth. He has authority. So you have been authorized. Luke chapter 10 verse 19. I have given you authority to trample on snakes and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy. Nothing will harm you. That is a Bible. I'm not manufacturing some stuff. That sounds nice. So there's a devil. And he's a very crazy fellow. He's been around. The old dragon. He's been around for a long time. He's caused so much havoc. He doesn't like, he doesn't like it when people are happy. So he sometimes gives them fake happiness. But he was, his aim is always the same. Oh, he wants to kill you. So in, think, in case you think the devil loves you, you're joking. <laughs> That guy hates you with a passion. He wants to kill you. Everything is dangling. It's a trap. So people even say, you even hear Satan worshippers. What rubbish. How can you worship Satan? <laughs> that is a dangerous pledge. Because you're going to hell. Straight. No question about it. Straight to hell. That's what he wants. So, all that to say, we have been authorized to trample upon serpents and scorpions. That is why you are God's representation to go out in the world and bring sanity. Those that are bound by Satan and his demons, you need to set them free. Amen. I'm going to read a few more passages and we'll move to the close. Ephesians chapter 1 verse 18 to 23. I pray that the eyes of your heart may be enlightened in order that you might know the hope to which he has called you, the riches of his glorious inheritance in his holy people, and his incomparable great power for us who believe. That power is the same as a mighty strength he ex is, is exerted when he raised Christ from the dead and seated him at the right hand of heavenly, of the heavenly, in the heavenly realms. For ab far above all authority, power, dominion, and every name that is invoked, not only in the present age, but also in the one to come. And God placed 
all things under his feet and, and appointed him to be head over everything for the church, which is his holy body, the fullness of him who fills everything in every way. How else do you want me to explain? Tell your neighbor you are authorized. Amen, amen, amen. So now we're going to the conclusion. So what is the title of our message was the mission is still the same. The reason why I, th I thought I should bring this up is because sometimes we think we are about another business. We have a mission that God has given us. There is nothing else. The church is about the mission of God. The moment you start doing your own thing, it's not about God, it's yours. It's your own thing. The mission is still the same. I had to back up and tell you who are you representing? Who it is? Who is it that you're representing? Who is it that you're representing? If you don't know, then you'll be playing, you know, Pastor Hagarak said you'll be playing monkey <laughs> games. You'll be playing funny games. Because sometimes we are lost in all kinds of things. So first of all, who are we representing? What has he done for us? We have just established the fact that we are not what we think we are. We are powerful. We carry an authority on our life that is beyond human understanding. We don't, unfortunately, we do not believe it most of the time. We say these things, but we don't believe them. We are all about slogans and everything. The country that I was born in and my, my country, the country of my citizenship, which is Zambia, we used to have a president, the late Dr. Kenneth David Kaunda. Great guy. Now, there was a time, I look back now, I'm like, why was that? There's a time, you see these politicians, when they start campaigning, when they go into power sometimes, they don't want to get out, they don't want to get out. It becomes so sweet, they want to stay there. We used to chant something like, Dr. Kaunda, wamuyaya, wamuyaya, lesapali. <laughs> Interpretation, he lives forever, he lives forever, God bless him. Ha! Huh! You don't live forever. Only God can do that. You understand? So, the thing is, <laughs> so humanity is a weird place. So, for, even for us as a church, we need to understand who we are really for us to um, operate properly. So, the core mission of Christian belief is often summarized as the Great Commission. That's what we call it. That's a, it's a nice phrase that has come, we've come up with which is found in the Gospels. The scripture below, well, the, the scriptures I'm going to read about, we're going to basically describe that. So if you look at Matthew, which, which I've read before, Matthew chapter 28, verse 19 to 20, it says, Therefore go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you. And surely I am with you always um, to the very end of the age. So if you look at this passage, um, which is basically where this Great Commission expression comes from. The, the central mission of a believer is to spread the teachings of Jesus Christ, make disciples of all nations, baptize them, and teach them to follow the ways of Christ. It emphasizes the importance of sharing the message and the salvation and making new, new disciples who will continue this mission. So, most of the time we, we think, no, the preaching of the gospel and stuff is not for me. Yes, I, I believe in Jesus, but I am not a preacher. You are mistaken. The Bible says, go and make what? Disciples. So, you are a disciple. Tell your neighbor you are a disciple. That's what we are. So, you, gotta, you have to go and make other disciples. So, that's why I was saying to you young people, don't think conventional. Don't think you're Pastor Reverend C. You have to stand in a pulpit and preach. It's not everybody who preaches. Media has changed. Communication has changed. Find your place and be effective. Don't just go out there and make noise. Make sure that you are setting traps for non-believers to fall into a good place of Jesus Christ. So hook them, bring them in, in your own innovation. Very, very soon, we'll be sharing some, some, some things that the Lord has been putting on our heart, even as we, we embark on, on a mission campaign. You'll be surprised some things that God has suggested. I say God has suggested because they were not our idea. Very different approaches. What's the key? Bring people to Christ. 
So we'll be sharing an agenda here. Some of you will be approaching you. Some of you have already approached to, do, to take up roles you have never, things you probably don't think, ah, oh, what is that? What are you asking me to do? We'll be talking to some of you because you have to take your place. Everybody is a disciple. We are differently skilled. Some of us can stand. I'm actually, I was telling Reverend C, you know that I'm a very shy guy. <laughs> he was laughing at me. I'm actually shy. So, when I get this body, I don't know where it comes, I don't know where it comes from. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah. So, what I'm saying is, people are lost. People are still lost. In case you thought maybe the world has changed now, we can just forget it. Let's stop this preaching and all that stuff. No, 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 no. People are lost. They are going to hell. And we shall be held accountable. I'll be sharing another song by Keith Green as we close. Because this guy made a mark on my life. And I've never recovered. So, yeah, I also have to pass on that thing. <laughs> so people are helpless. In case you didn't know, I was in, uh, I, 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 my barber is somewhere in Green but I live in Oni. I, I, but I don't like too many people touching my head. <laughs> so it's usually when I find a barber, I'll try and stick with them so that they can learn how I cut my hair and stuff like that. So I was in Oni with my son and myself were doing our hair. When I noticed a group from, um, I think there's a church that's now operating out of University of Maryland, and they were in the mall. They were like sharing. It was just before Easter, I think a day before Easter. They were basically passing out pamphlets, inviting people to church. And some people were open enough to speak. People were being prayed for in the shopping mall. And for me, I was blown away. Like, oh my God, this is a reminder that we think people are happy. They look happy. They are confused and lost and all kinds of things. Why do you think someone would get up and go and start shooting people that he doesn't know? Why would a person do that? That's a place of, it tells you how desperate society is. And we are sitting back in church having a party. We need to repent. <laughs> so, today we are, there's a call, of act, call, call to action. I'm not ask, I'm asking us to do something it's weird. We just have to be practical. That's what I'm asking practical steps, simple things. I'm not saying we're going to do crusades, stand on people's roofs and do what? No, no, no. Practical things. Practical things. But we're going to preach the gospel. You need to remember that people are empty, seeking meaning and purpose out of this life. People are going to hell. So we cannot sit and bask. What is the call to action? A call to action. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. So the call to action speaks about being available to fulfill the Great Commission. We are called disciples and we must each take our place and do our part. You know, um, it's not the pastor. I've already spoken about that or select few. Every child of God is a disciple of Jesus Christ and they must take their place. So a few points that I'm going to just give to you so that you can remember the call to action. Number one. Say to your neighbor, keep it real. Keep it real. Yeah. So, what am I? What do I mean? So, if we want to do um, missions, we need to remember that we are not just a fun club. We're not just gathering here, you know, to sing songs. It's powerful. I mean, there's a place for our gathering. Because we need to refuel. It's almost like a service for those that drive Teslas. You need to have a docking station. Otherwise, you'll be shut. <laughs> you won't you'll have a beautiful car that can't go anywhere. Because it doesn't have a charging station. Same thing for us believers. We have to come in here and be about charging each other. Speaking into each other. Equipping. But we, that's not the end of a party. That's not the end goal. The end goal is not for us gathering on ourselves. You know, and feeling great that, yes, we had a great time. Yes, we do have great times. But we need to keep it real and get out there and be, make a difference. For young people, my challenge to you is begin to innovate in your, your outreach. Yes, we have, we have inherited stuff that's been done in the past. The giving of flyers. Who reads flyers these days? You understand what I'm saying? We need to now say, what do people do? How do I deliver a flyer? It may not be a physical flyer. It could be something electronic that you deliver. So we need to change our game. 
So I'm challenging you young people. Some of you are great thinkers, but you don't want to, when you come to church, you leave your brain at the door. There, you come in here, you are some kind of a zombie of sorts. You walk out and the brain works up. Grrr, suddenly you're thinking again. We don't want that. Bring your brain to the church. We want that ingenuity and creativeness. So we, our, our, our approach to, to souls will be different. It's about bringing the numbers. Some will come to our church, some will not, but they'll be saved. You will make a difference in someone's life. You just never know. For me, the guy that preached to me, for those brothers of mine who are from Nigeria, let me tell you, the guy who brought me to the Lord was a Nigerian guy. Imango Chijindo. I'll never forget the man. I went to church chasing after a girl. It wasn't my wife. <laughs> I was young. So <laughs> it is no more. <laughs> and I came out with Jesus. <laughs> I was in church looking for a girl. I was doing what in church? Looking for a girl. <laughs> I sat with her. Everything was going well. And then this guy starts talking. Ah. And then I'm like, oh my God, I'm not a Christian. <laughs> because I thought I was. But Emmanuel spoke the word in a way that I could not resist it. And that day I gave my life to Jesus Christ. And today I am what I am because of Jesus. Amen. Amen. I would have probably been dead if I wasn't saved. Because imagine, most of my friends are dead. Not because they were unfortunate. But Jesus saved me. Jesus saved me. And I'm here today. So, that is why we have to go. So, keep it real. So, young people, my challenge is keep it real. Don't be, don't overthink it. <laughs> don't be trapped by our traditions. The church has changed. Let me tell you something. These things you're seeing in church, in the 80s, going into the 90s, it was not allowed. <laughs> Bring a guitar in the church? What? We never used to do that. I used to rap. I stopped rap music because the church says it's synth. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? The church didn't understand that the world is going to change. We want it to be traditional. He near my God to the... Who's going to listen to you in this day and age? <laughs> That's for you and me to encourage each other. But if you go preaching, singing songs like that out there, what is that? <laughs> you understand? The world has changed. That's what I'm saying. The world has changed. So be innovative. Allow that mind to think. I'm challenging you. Right now, I'm looking for new ways of reaching out. Effective ways. How can we reach our society? That is what we're looking for. That's what God is asking. That's, a, that's from God. The next uh, point, I'll be done. Let's be realistic. Let's be realistic. Tell your neighbor, be realistic. <laughs> These are strange points for a church, eh? <laughs> yeah, so be realistic. Let me, I'll give you a very simple analogy. I like using my, my field of, um, my profession as an example. You see, in a sales environment or in a sales um, uh, organization, <laughs> it's a very simple conversation. It's about results. You can speak all the English. You can be as eloquent as you want. Your boss or your organization, all they want is your, how much did you bring? Finish. No, you know, actually what I'm trying to say, you see, as a matter of fact, vividly and cumbersome, you know, if you look at it from here and then, uh, what, what did you bring, boss? Let's stop telling stories. No, actually, you see, yesterday I saw the customer and then, and, uh, what did you bring? Now, that sounds funny. Let me tell you something. <laughs> when we come before our God, exactly the same conversation. No, we will say, ah, oh, the Holy Ghost was, a... where are the souls? No, actually, you see, Lord, yeah, yeah, yeah. It was power. Where are the souls? Simple message. Keep your eyes on the go. Don't get carried away. You understand what I'm saying, church? Simple message. The mission is clear. We can do, we can jump all we want. Nothing wrong with that. I do that, even alone. <laughs> I saw someone do it worse than me. I'm sorry. <laughs> 
<laughs> I saw someone on some of his social media, one of our sisters. She went like, she went viral. <laughs> so we can do all that, but where are the souls? Simple. Let's be realistic. So keep it simple. Keep your eyes on the ball. It's, all, it's a game of numbers. God is looking for people. Okay? Um, the final one is do not be a statistic. Tell your neighbor. Don't be a statistic. Yeah, my speaking tongue is word. Don't, don't be a statistic. <laughs> so what am I saying is don't just be a number in the church. Like you're sure, oh, I'm, a, I'm an agape, what's out of church, you know, that's my church, you know, da, da, da. What do you do there? We want impact. We want results. Don't just show up here, warm pills and stuff and say, oh, I belong to the church. Yes, hallelujah, we love you. But we want you to be a part of this work. Amen. We want you to be a part of the kingdom. So as we close, as we close, <clears throat> as we close, um, bottom line, if you listen to everything I've been talking about, we're talking about being available, each one of us, in our own unique way. I'm not asking you to be me. I'm not asking you to be, you know, what you're not. Just be who you are. But bring your, your A game to the Lord. Don't bring substandard service to God. God is very, very, very um, particular. David says, I will not bring what costs me nothing to my God. You understand? So we need to stretch. The way we work so hard for things that are useless, things that are empty. Why do I call them useless? Because according to the, to the book of Ecclesiastes, it says vanity, vanity. All is vanity. It is a chasing after the wind. So some of those things you have put your brain so hard for, it is vanity. One day, it will mean nothing because your life is not your own. You can be zapped in a moment. So be about making a difference in people's lives. Be about meeting people's needs. So Christianity is not just about us preaching, oh, salvation, salvation. Meet the needs of the people. Help those that, are in, that need help. Be relevant. Be available. So let's be available. That's how we make impact. Sometimes it's not you preaching to your neighbor. It's you going to help them. Consistently. They say, this guy is always there. Why? Why is he so nice? Then they'll ask you, ah, Emmanuel, what's up with you? Why are you so generous? Where is that coming from? So what I'm saying is we need to be that that person. We need to be available. So in conclusion, I'm going to use another song. This guy, as I said, I think really did impact my life, Keith Green. Another song from him, he says, open your eyes. So if you're looking for a song, go look for open your eyes. He says, this generation of believers, you are responsible, that, that you and me are a part of. We are responsible for this generation of souls all over the world. We are responsible for them. We are responsible to pray daily for the needs of, the, of ministries around the world. And ask God, how about me not sending my money this time? How about me going? I'm quoting him verbatim, the way he puts it. It's so easy to write checks. It is so easy. But God can't cash out out-of-state out, out checks in heaven. He needs you. And then he says... Open your eyes to the world all around you. Open your eyes. Open your eyes. This world is much more than the things that surround you. You must arise and open your eyes. Sometimes we're too busy to share, but Jesus wants, you, wants us to care, to care. Open your arms to the naked and shivering. Open your arms. Open your arms. We need a little less taking and a lot more giving. We, we're so safe and warm. We can open our arms and love a little bit stronger and pray a little bit longer. And then he says, Jesus says, when you love someone, in his name, we're loving him. Jesus says, when we touch someone, in his name, we're 
touching him. And he says, and we've got to show them the light. We've got to pour out our lives. Open our hearts to the ones who are desperate. Open our hearts. Open our hearts. They may never repay you, but their souls are worth it. The life you impart when you open your heart. Jesus loves all men the same. So we, we've got to go out in his name. Amen. That is my conclusion. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord, praise the Lord. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Let's just stand for a moment. Let's just stand a little bit. We're going to sing an old song, Oh, to Jesus I Surrender. We just sing I Surrender the, the chorus. Hallelujah. My surrender
We come individually, Almighty God, and surrender to you. We ask the Lord you will help us to come to that place of surrender. Father, we will be poured out, O oh Father. Father, your will, God, will be fulfilled through our lives. We lay aside all kinds of excuses. We lay aside, Almighty God, complications, whatever, oh God. Lord, we lay it all at your feet. And Father, we choose to be available. We choose to be realistic. We choose to keep it real, oh God. We choose to be engaged, Almighty God, in our society. We choose to be relevant, to be useful, Almighty God. Father, oh God, we will touch the needy of God in our societies, wherever, Lord, you have places. We will reach out, Almighty God, and be that difference, be that light, be that salt, oh God. We surrender, God, as a church. We bring ourselves back to you, Almighty God. Touch us, Almighty God, once again. We honor you. We bless you. It's in Jesus' mighty name that we have prayed. Amen and amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Amen. God bless you. that you continue to lift him as he leads uh, your people. Cover his family and cover all those around him. In the name of Jesus we pray. Amen. Good, good afternoon. Good afternoon. I almost said good morning. Good afternoon to each and every one of you. What a privilege it is to uh, be in worship with all of you today. I don't take that for granted and uh, it is just wonderful to be here with all of you this morning. A brief uh, oof, recap, excuse me, <laughs> of the sermon. The mission is still the same. Methods may change, times may change, but the mission is still the same. We are filled and not uh, possessed with the Holy Spirit. We are transformed by the renewal of our mind. God stands for justice, and therefore we must stand for justice in an unjust society. Keep it real, embrace your innovation, and keep your eyes on the agenda. And remember that what God cannot do does not exist. And we thank God for that. We will now transition into a time of giving, and for that I will call on Pastor Muna. Amen. Thank you. Thank you. Hallelujah. My job is easy today. Thank you again, Pastor Boyd, for that message. Um, you know that God is speaking to us as a congregation because that is in alignment with um, some of the things that we were praying for um, yesterday. Um, so we thank God for speaking to us. Also in that same line, um, when it comes to the mission, part of the mission is having a place of worship. That is where people can be fed from, where people can be taken care of as an oasis for God's provision. And um, what we're also praying for is that God will raise among us 
are faithful givers. So if we look at 2 Corinthians chapter 9 with me, 2 Corinthians chapter 9, I'll encourage you just with a couple of scriptures in here as you prepare your offering. Um, verse 6 um, says, I say, I, this I say, he who sows sparingly will also reap sparingly, and he who sows bountifully will also reap bountifully. So let each one give as he purposes in his heart, not grudgingly of necessity, for God loves a cheerful giver. So that is our prayer this morning, that as you give, do not give of necessity. Give because you love God. Be Give because you see, you want to see his work expand. Give because you want to see the realization and the manifestation of the word that has been preached this morning. That indeed we may continue to distribute the word of God even in this new way with God with what God is doing um, with the media and uh, the social media and the team that God has put together and 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 just worshiping in a, in a in a sanctuary so all those things need to be financed so may you give as a response to the word today and the Bible says that when we do this it says God is able to make all grace is by his grace is able to do this that he is able to make all grace abound towards us that you and I, having all sufficiency in all things, we may abound, have an abundance for every good work. So God is able to do this so that you don't have to give out of out of what you don't have hallelujah when this grace comes upon you he's able to supply all of your needs and give you excess but you have to have that heart that willingness to support the mission amen so hopefully you've got your giving ready done by now and there are ways to give me if you could help me put the ways to give up on there again uh, we, you can give through whatsapp you can give through um, Cash App, which is the app you download that on your phone. You can give through Zelle. The Zelle email is there. You all, or you can give through uh, PushPay um, and text that code to PushPay. Or you can scan that code that you see on there and it will pop up on your phone and you can give that way. Amen. Hallelujah. Father, we thank you and give you praise. That as we respond to this word of remembering that the mission is still the mission father we pray that as we give in response to this word to perpetuate and to push forward the mission may you receive our offering and father we pray that may this grace to give be our portion grant us this grace to give grant us this empowerment oh god to give grant us oh god your riches at christ's expense to give we thank you oh god that you are the one who supplies seed for our giving and thank you lord that you're able to make this grace so abound unto us that we at having all sufficiency oh god we will abound unto good work so we thank you oh god for reminding us that the mission is still a mission and that it is a good work for us to give unto that mission. So Lord, we pray, receive our offering this morning. Receive our giving this morning as we offer it in the name of Jesus. And mighty God, we pray that those who did not recognize or see the seed that you've given us to give unto you, may you open our eyes that we may see the seed that you've given us to give, that we may give at another occasion. So Father, we thank and we give you praise and in the name of Jesus we welcome the harvest of all sufficiency in our lives in Jesus name we pray amen hallelujah amen we will now transition into a time of announcements the announcements they will not be video announcements so you will have to endure my voice for the next few minutes I will be very brief. Every, starting every Wednesday, of course, we have our fast prayer and word. Morning Glory is from 6 a.m. to 6.30. If you miss that, you can also join us in the evening at 8 p.m., uh, from 8 p.m. to 9 p.m., and the platform we use is Zoom. Agape Nights, Friday, April 19th. They, a 
agape nights that you will uh, be we will have word prayer and worship it's a fantastic way to spend your friday nights some people spend friday nights at the club we spend it here at church men of destiny men of destiny men who are you um are, are we here today <laughs> We're right here too, okay. We have a fellowship outing on Saturday, April 20th at Fairland Regional Park in Silver Spring, Maryland at 9 a.m. And this promises to be a time of fellowship and we thank God for the men of the church. Later that day at 2 p.m. we will be having a Mission 316 Outreach Boot Camp and I believe for further information you can contact Pastor Boyd. Amen. May, the month of May is almost here. That means Women's Month. Women, where are you? Women, are you? Where are you? Okay. I'm, don't, I'm almost finished, guys. Don't worry. <laughs> I'm almost finished. Women's Month. We will be having a, a powerful uh, month on May 3rd. It will be Agape Nights led by Lady Lulu. Um, on May 8th, we will have a uh, Let's Talk Deliverance, Growth Through Spiritual Freedom, led by uh, Minister Grace and Evangelist May Chungu. On May 15th, our very own Mrs. O will be leading a Let's Talk Destiny, Recovering and Fulfilling Purpose. Purpose that will be on May 15th at 8 p.m. On on the dot, so make sure you come here on the dot. On May 17th, Minister Shashala will be uh, leading us with Chosen Generation. So make sure you are there for that. On May 22nd, our very own Minister Lisa will be leading us. Make sure you are there again. And their information for our uh, Mother's Day, Women's Day celebration is online. And there is also a, a QR code which you can scan. Hope to see you there and ensure that you invite someone. There will be a table talk led by uh, our very own Sophie and my mother, <laughs> which will be very nice. Again, you can RSVP. Uh, Oh, my, my mother, his name is uh, Kunda Kunda, so uh, if you're watching, uh, you'll be there. Again, there will be a community outreach on June 1st from 9 a.m. to 1 p.m. Um, <coughs> excuse me. We have an exciting opportunity. This is for the women of the church. We have an exciting opportunity for you to make a meaningful impact in our community. On June 1st, we will be organizing a special outreach event at our Daily Bread in Baltimore, and we want you, the ladies, to be a part of it. This is more than just a volunteer opportunity. This is a chance to show God's love in action and make a positive difference in the lives of others. Transportation won't be an issue because uh, there will be carpools available for those who need it. So don't let the distance hold you back from joining the women of the church in this act of service and love. If you would like to, con if you need more information, you can contact Dr. Katie for more information. A final announcement that was omitted: all the women are asked to stay, uh, to remain behind after. The service. Now, here comes the best part of the service. Do we have any first time visitors worshiping with us this morning? All right, we have some first time. All right, all right. Amen. It, you it, are it. welcome in the house of God. You are welcome in the house of God. You are welcome in the house of God. You are welcome in the house of God. Oh, sister and my brother we thank God for you 
you could have been anywhere else, but the Lord directed you to this space. You entered as a guest, but now you leave as family. Uh, we ask that you will stay back and we'll have one of our ministers attend to you. And uh, we're grateful for you. For those of you watching online, we will also want to acknowledge you. We thank God for you. Uh, you could have logged on anywhere else. Uh, but you decided to log on to Agape Word Center Church International, and for that we are very grateful. We have now reached uh, the business end of this service. I told you I wouldn't be too long. <laughs> Let's pray. Father, once again, we thank you for this service. We thank you for the word that was preached. We thank you for the worship that was lifted up. And Father, as we descend from this mountaintop experience back into the valley, may you be with us until we meet again. We thank you in the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. And now our benediction, we'll recite our benediction, Ephesians 3, verse 20 to 21. And now to him who is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we ask or think, according to the power that works in us. To him be the glory in the church by Christ Jesus to all generations forever and ever. Amen. God bless you and ensure that you... Thank you for joining us at Agape Word Center Church International. Whether it's your first time or 1,000th time, we are so excited that you have joined us today. At Agape, we believe in raising up agents of change that will serve God's kingdom with diligence, excellence, and persistency. For more, follow us on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, and YouTube. Once again, thank you and be blessed.